without the services of Dutchman Luke Nyholt, who's serving a one-match suspension. And because of other injuries and the Scottish Cup final in two weeks' time, manager Tommy McLean has been forced into several changes. But one man who's been a fixture all season is goalkeeper Alistair Maxwell, who is ever-present and today plays his 43rd consecutive match since last August. His excellent form has taken him into the European Championship squad. And like Maxwell, Chris McCart is another example of Tommy McLean's youth policy and also emerged from the Motherwell Boys Club. He's also featured in every game this season and played for Scotland in the league centenary match last August. Rangers are without skipper Richard Goff, who's still recovering from flu, and that means yet another reorganisation of the defence for new manager Walter Smith. So he'll be depending on the experience of goalkeeper Chris Woods, who's looking for his 28th shutout in 47 games, which hasn't missed a match all season and hasn't lost a goal in the past five games. And one man who'll fondly remember his last visit here is another stalwart in defence, Gary Stevens. He scored twice in Rangers' 4-2 win last November, and like Woods, has played in all 46 matches. The referee is Mr Andrew Waddle from Edinburgh. And so the match kicks off in a highly charged atmosphere. There's a distinct championship feeling in the air here at Fir Park. Rangers seeking their 41st league title. They've won it outright 39 times and shared the very first with them Barton way back in 1891. I can tell you they also clinched the 1953 title on what was then goal average, the only time they did that. Responsibility on Nigel Speckman this afternoon. Big Patterson well forward again. Keatley with him. David Cooper with the free kick. McDonald climbing high, swept away by Hitley. Another long one for Mo Johnson to chase. Plenty of time for the Motherwell captain this afternoon, Chris McCart, to get the ball safely back to Maxwell. John Brown caught in possession. Letting Dougie Arnott get forward, but Brown caught dithering by Ian Ferguson. Could have been costly, but here come Rangers. Good long ball forward to Hatley. The challenge by McCart, and Rangers have the corner kick. a signal for Nisbet to move forward and also in the box there's Ferguson with the first time shot wide of target he's not happy about the way the ball was played to him good play between Johnson and Walters Walters showing tremendous pace getting in the cross Deflected behind for the corner. Well, the Rangers fans and Phil Cry now. Hunlet flipping it forward, looking for Hatelitz, headed away by Patterson. Bit of help there from Griffin. by Stevens, touch on by Cowan, lovely touch to Walters. Nisbet is in the middle with Hatley. Headed away by Patterson, good interception. There's a slack ball though from Ian Ferguson of Motherwell. It goes behind for the corner. Nisbet still well forward. Walters with the corner. Hitley climbing, getting the touch. Away by Angus. Some help from Cooper. Rangers throw. Hitley. Johnston. 
Spackman. Oh, great save by Maxwell. Spackman shot, taking out his wicket deflection. The goalkeeper had committed himself and managed to get right back across his line. It was Hitley's touch on. Bo Johnson then playing it. Ferguson into the path of Spackman. Look at the deflection. The goalkeeper doing brilliant play. And again under pressure. The ball still in play. Mo Johnston. It's cleared off the line. A direct on back. The referee indicating a corner kick. The goalkeeper getting the merest touch. The ball had gone out of play according to referee Waddle. In any case, Motherwell managing to keep it out. Connor played in. Cowan launching himself at it. This time it's a goal kick. Oh, a little spell of pressure from Rangers, but that really was a marvellous save from Alistair Maxwell. It's one he'll be proud of. Good for Motherwell. Play between Cowan and Spackman. Walters. Oh, look for Johnson to chase, but Griffin's there. Oh, Walters did the difficult thing then gave the ball away. Ferguson. Good play by Ian Ferguson. The early ball cut out by Nisbet. Oh, pushing it behind as Dougie Arn threatened. Oh, Chris Woods organising his defence. Chris McCart, well forward. Craig Patterson also moving into the penalty area. Dougie Cooper bring it into the near post. Driven forward, John Philiban. Twenty-five minutes gone, and Motherwell dramatically take the lead. John Philiban driving the ball into the roof of the net. It was Cooper playing it into the near post towards Patterson. Hitley tried to provide the cover. The ball wasn't properly cleared. There was Philiban sending it into the roof of the net. Motherwell won. Rangers nil. Into Spackman. Cut out by Jimmy Dolan. Davy Cooper. Trying to find a Donald. Good cover though by Tom Cowan. Sandy Robertson getting the touch forward. Well, Rangers making a tactical change there, and Nigel Spackman moving in alongside John Brown. He's got Nisbet operating in the right back role with Cowan at left back, and Sandy Robertson operating in midfield with Hurlock and Ferguson. Nisbet getting the touch. Well, the goalkeeper challenged in the air by Hatley, and the free kick awarded to Motherwell. Goalkeeper looking none too happy. It was Nisbet heading the ball right across the face of the penalty area. The goalkeeper off the ground and bundled by Hatley. It was spoken to by the referee. Sandy Robertson to Walters. A change of pace by Walters. Great play by the Rangers winger. Headed behind by Craig Patterson. Well, Patterson did well because Walters really had the turn the defence. And that's the kind of play Rangers will need from Mark Walters this afternoon if they to get themselves back into this match. Patterson again stretching to clear. As far as Ian Ferguson, forward to Nisbet. Hitley coming in. Fine save again by Alistair Maxwell. 
Well, it was a nice little ball forward by Ferguson to Nisbet. He hit the cross first time, and Hitley climbing above the defence, got in the header. Well taken again by Maxwell, who's had a fine first half. Hitley again, switching the play to Walters. Griffin moving in quickly. Walters. Good effort by Mark Walters. Good handling again by the goalkeeper. Well, Mark Walters showing his considerable skills again. Driving in the ball, well taken by the goalkeeper. But there goes the half-time whistle here at Fur Park. John Philbin scoring. After 25 minutes, a corner coming in from Davy Cooper on the right. He played it into the near post. It wasn't properly cleared as Hitley tried to provide cover, and there was Philbin to drive it into the roof of the net. The half time score Motherwell 1, Rangers 0. This car is rather special. It has special wheels with low-profile tyres, special paintwork, even on the door mirrors, special seat trim, adjustable steering column, tachometer, even a rear spoiler. And the price? That can't be right. Hitley and Johnson get the second half underway. And immediately Rangers winning the throw in. And to Robertson. Through to Hitley. Challenged by Hakart. The Rangers have the corner. with the corner the downward header Mo Johnston's in there what another marvellous save by Alistair Maxwell well Rangers just cannot believe it the reflexes of the Motherwell goalkeeper quite remarkable the corner coming in for Walters a downward header from Cowan Mo Johnston getting the touch and the goalkeeper denying him again and that's Walters Elizabeth getting the touch but no power in the effort Ferguson, but uh, just failing to pick out Jimmy Dolan. Dolan to Ferguson. Dolan again. Gary Cooper. Cooper running into Terry Hubbard. Free kick to 
Rangers. In Ferguson, well, he picks a shot. Didn't quite get hold of that one. Well, he made a little bit of space for himself, but couldn't quite deliver it the way he wanted. And Maxwell took it quite comfortably. Ferguson does well. Walters. Still Walters. Getting under cross, doing well, but the cover provided by Ian Angus. Walters winning the throw for Rangers. Sandy Robertson. Touch on by Ferguson. Good cover by Phil O'Donnell because Nisbet was threatening with a lovely little touch by Ian Ferguson, almost setting up the chance. So the corner to Rangers. Nisbet off the bar, headed away by Griffin. Robertson shot right into the hands of the goalkeeper. Well, Rangers so unlucky in this match. The corner kick coming in. This was head up, coming off the face of the crossbar, and Jim Griffin sending it clear. Ian Ferguson is the man going off. And Peter Haustra, the Dutchman, comes into the fray. Pleasure of David Cooper. And Brown looking for Hatley, gets a touch. No more Johnson going for it there, but failing to make contact. Shadowed by Chris McCart. That was Brown's free kick. Hatley getting in ahead of Patterson this time. Again, McCart getting in ahead of Johnson. He's reading the game so well. David Cooper, chance on for Arnott. Well taken by Chris Woods. Woods had to move smartly. The long ball played forward, catching the Rangers' defence. Dropping over the head of Spackman, and Woods really had to commit himself. Spackman. Rangers pushing everyone forward now. Robertson to Nisbet. Smackman. Ball in looking for Johnson. He gets the touch on. And goes. Housed by the referee awarding the penalty kick. Now well, Craig Patterson walking over towards the referee. The challenge made on Housedra. The long ball coming into the penalty area. Mo Johnson did brilliantly. In the head of McCart. The challenge made by Griffin and the referee points to the spot. So it's Mark Walters against Maxwell. Oh, and he's missed it. He sends it well wide of target. <laughs> ball forward for Dougie Arnott to chase. Chris Woods having to race from his area. And again, the range of defence caught rather square. And Johnston. Walters, Sandy Robertson, good ball to Peter Haustra. Better play by Rangers, a good cross. Oh, another incredible save by Alistair Maxwell from Mark Hatley. The ball played in from the left from Peter Haustra after a good build-up by Rangers. He hit the early cross. Magnificent diving header by Hatley, and there was Maxwell again. Hatley and Johnston in the middle, Nisbet's there as well. Mo Johnston. 
Italy. Hard luck. Well, Mo Johnson just getting too much angle on his head up. It was Hitley who kept the ball in play. And then Hurluck having the shot over the top. Well, McCart running into trouble. Motherwell just being a bit too clever at the back. Hitley in there again by McCart and Patterson. It's Angus though who gets his head to the ball. Furlock. Patterson again. Arnott did well to get the ball to Kirk. Chance for Motherwell to counter-attack. Good ball from Kirk to Arnott. Dougie Arnott. Oh, he scored! A tremendous goal by Dougie Arnott. Five minutes to go and Dougie Arnott gets his 15th goal of the season in a remarkable afternoon here at Fir Park long ball coming out of defence and Arnott racing clear of the defence he also had uh, Jimmy Dolan going through the middle with him and he slotted the ball high past Chris Woods into the back of the net so Motherwell 2 Rangers 0 Lane must be a proud man this afternoon. Motherwell without several players because of injury. And here they come again, Rangers stretched, it's Arnott again, Twistwood's committing himself, and he scored! It's 3-0 to Motherwell. In the final minute of the game, Rangers caught again by the ball out of defence. 89 minutes, Motherwell 3, Rangers 0. 16 goals this season for Dougie Arnott. Again, running on to the long ball. The Rangers defence caught flat-footed. Chris Woods committing himself, but a fine finish. The ball flipping the post and running into the back of the net. Well, in terms of goal difference, this really does mean something in the championship as well. Rangers held a four-goal advantage over Aberdeen. The Motherwell fans in the enclosure opposite the main stand are quite ecstatic as they look forward to Hamden Park in a couple of weeks' time. There goes the final whistle. Jubilant Motherwell fans. Dougie Armitt, the man who put them to the sword. Two goals in the last five minutes of the game. The first one racing clear of a very square defence, a long ball coming out towards him, and he hit it high past Chris Woods into the back of the net. Then with just 60 seconds left, again catching the defence, snapping and slotting the ball in past Woods off the post. The final score at Fir Park, Motherwell 3, Rangers 0. Alistair, quite a game. I don't think anyone can quite believe what happened because you were under siege for a large part of the time, but then again, 3-0 winners in the end. That's right. Uh, name of the game, scoring goals. Uh, I think today we had the, the break of the ball uh, on a number of occasions, uh, but it was nice to see uh, ourselves getting three goals at the other end. Now, despite the fact that you and the rest of the defence were under pressure for quite a while, you did seem quite composed at the back. That's right, the, the defence have been playing uh, re really well of late uh, and they, they have breeds confidence throughout the whole back four if uh, the whole back four are playing well, you know, and it, it showed today. One or two saves which were quite exceptional today. Yes, I had one or two, but uh, I, I felt I had my fair share of luck with them as well, especially the one from, uh, I think it was Mark Haley, the, the header. It came in, I think it was a great cross from Peter Houstra and uh, Mark just threw himself in and I, I just tried to spread myself and fortunately I hit my shin and spun round the post. And the first half shot which took a rather fierce deflection, you seem to be going down already and then saw the ball come off. That's right, I think it came off, uh, I think it was Jim Griffin that came off. Uh, I think I had it covered but uh, it took a bobble just in front of me and I wasn't taking any chances, I just decided to turn it around the post. Tommy, quite an incredible game altogether. Would you head halfway through that second half that you would have run out 3-0 winners? Uh, no, no 3-0. At that stage, Rangers were chasing the game and had us uh, hemmed in. Uh, the disappointing thing, from my point of view, at that stage, was basically the way we were giving the ball away. 
they they played it easy for us, you know, because they bumped things back to front and we handled that quite well. But it was when we had the ball that we definitely just kicked it straight back at them. Uh, and the example really are the point I was looking for is the last two goals is when we built up through the middle of the park and broke away and went up as units and that's what we should have been doing more of. You must have been delighted with the way the defence played though, even under pressure they looked composed. Yeah, I thought they'd done really well. Uh, you know, they handled things well because the boy Haitley's awkward to play against and Morris is always, to give him a half chance he's there. But we handled things quite well there. You may be the wrong man to ask, but it looked as if things just weren't going to go Rangers way today. Uh, I would agree with you there, you know, because obviously they missed a penalty at that stage uh, because if they'd have scored, uh, you know, they had their tails up at that stage. And uh, the, miss, the penalty miss gave us the lift and we pushed on for there. So, a sensational outcome at Fir Park and after an earlier scare, Aberdeen came through to beat St Johnson at Pitodry. Not surprisingly, Don's fans were ecstatic as the news from Motherwell filtered through. News travels fast. It certainly did from Fir Park to Pataudry yesterday. Aberdeen fans quickly realised that a draw at Ibrox next weekend would secure their club the title. All we have asked for is to get to Ibrox from the position we were in to get to Ibrox to play for the league championship. Now we're going there on Saturday to play for the league championship. And I think it's a magnificent game for, for Scottish football. I think it's, it'll be the biggest game in Britain next week. And Aberdeen are now in the driving seat and uh, we've worked so hard, so we want to go there next week and uh, play as well as Aberdeen can play. Well, Alex Smith, obviously confident, Gordon, but what were Rangers thinking about chasing the game so recklessly when goal difference is a factor? I really don't know. I mean, they were 1-0 down, and as is expected, I mean, they were pushing forward, but, I mean, you've got to keep a bit of discipline and your back four at the same time, and, and they completely lost that, and, and that and it could cost them dearly, but it's something that I felt wouldn't have happened if Gary Stevens had stayed on the pitch. Not many good Rangers performances, but in fairness to Mark Hatley, he worked very hard indeed. Yeah, he battled throughout the 90 minutes, and it was a shame for him that he finished on the losing side. In fact, his, um, it was probably one of the best aerial battles I've seen this season, Mark Hatley and Craig Patterson. It really was terrific stuff. He put a tremendous amount of effort into the game yesterday, and I think, as we've said before, he never had the best of starts when he first came to Ibrox, but I think now, in particular with his performances over the last couple of months of the season, he's, he's certainly won over the fans. I mean, he sets this one up and then makes tremendous ground to get a, a, a downward header here. And this is about the time in the game. I mean, he does everything right here, but unfortunately Alistair Maxwell does as well, and I think they realised then it just wasn't going to be Rangers' day. Uh, you mentioned Craig Patterson there, and uh, he turned out to be a formidable opponent. It was a, it was a great battle. Yeah, and I think possibly if Craig Patterson hadn't been playing yesterday, it would have caused, um, Hately would have got a lot more, um, caused Motherwell a lot more problems than what he did, because he's, he's a big dominant centre-half, and he's somebody that I feel is vastly underrated, and I think his partnership with Chris McCart is probably one of the best in the Premier League. I mean, they've talked about Butcher and Goff, you know, McPherson and Levine, but the patterson McCart um, partnership is as good as any in the, uh, in the league. I mean, as well as getting up, he gets plenty of distance on his headers as well. I mean, he's no Beckenbauer on the ball, but he's very effective defensively. That's right, and Chris McCart, you just mentioned him there. Uh, another uh, terrific performance from him, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he's a player that every time I see him seems to get better. And I think he's going to be one of these players in the not-too-distant future he's going to be a regular in the Scotland set-up. He really has got a tremendous amount going for him. I mean, he's pacey, he's good in the air, and, and he's comfortable on the ball as well. He was getting in ahead of Mo Johnson quite a lot. There's an example of it there. Yeah, well, I felt it was the McCart-Patterson partner, uh, partnership that won the game for Motherwell yesterday. I mean, obviously, along with Rangers' bad defender at the end of the game, but a little flick here, but those kind of things are easy to do when you're 2-0 up. But he's certainly a very talented player and one we're going to hear a lot more about in the future. Now, the penalty kick, of course, the, the incident there, that could be, best be described as soft. Yes, um, I, th I, th I think they were a bit fortunate to get the penalty kick here. A little flick on. Hoistra just gets in front of Griffin here and tumbles over. But in saying that, it must have, looked at, it must have been quite a difficult angle for the referee to judge. But he gave the penalty. Great chance for Rangers to get back into the game. Pressure and tension get to Matt Walters and he misses it. Skies it way over the... Leans back a bit on the ball here and skies it over the bar. Then enter Dougie Arnott, another shrewd signing by Tommy McLean from Pollock Juniors. Yeah, I think he's um, booked his cup final place yesterday. Um, I mean, 
he never seen a great deal of the ball yesterday, but when he did, he was very, very effective because obviously Rangers have put them under that much pressure in the game. This, this is the goal here. I mean, we're talking about Rangers defending. If, I mean, there's only Spackman and Sandy Robertson in the picture here. It really is desperate defending, but nevertheless, it was a terrific, a terrific finish for Dougie Arnott. And he's a real live wire, wire character. He gets in in front of people, gets in, works hard to get in in front of defenders. And he's very lively and busy. Must be a bit of a nuisance to play against. So, you can rest assured, he'll be playing in the Scottish Cup final. He certainly battered throughout the game, didn't he? And this is... I mean, it really was criminal what Rangers were doing here at the end of the game. Played onside by John Brown. Yeah, but there's not another defender in sight. And another nice little finish, but I mean, that could cost Rangers dearly with, with the situation now. Everyone's talking about Rangers, but Motherwell now a great run, only one defeat in something like 12 games. Yeah, they're, they're going exceptionally well, and they're going to be a difficult team for Dundee United to overcome. And a lot for them to look forward to in the Cup final. Gordon, for the moment, thank you.